guys uh, today i'm going to talk about the database pack and the restore uh, strategy what we use in uh, db2 okay so as a db2 administrator i've always felt that whether you are good in uh, most of your administration task okay it doesn't matter okay but if you are not able to uh, restore your database as a db2 administrator then all the people will be pointing the gun at you and uh, you might even be fired from your organization so as administrator you should be very very well, well versed and thorough in your database backup strategy and restore okay so end of the day if you're not able to restore your database then uh, you are going to be into trouble okay now uh, why we take database backup uh, uh, so everything is prone to some kind of uh, errors or issues or so failures right now your server might fail your application might fail or your d you might have a disk failure where your database is located or it is possible that some user might have uh, like inserted wrong values in inside you know, the tables which must have corrupted the database right so to overcome all these things like um, to restore your database to a point in time where uh, nothing was happening nothing no, none of the failures happened you need those um, files intact right so, so uh, that's why you need a backup like even in your cell phone uh, when we take pictures we usually back up, back up to a cloud server or something so in case something happens to your phone you can always go back to the cloud server and restore back your pictures or videos right so um, in uh, db2 we have a concept of offline backup okay so uh, this is the syntax db2 backup database and your db database name to and the target location okay now if you give this command it mean basically means that it is going to be an offline backup uh, now what you mean by offline backup right for taking an offline backup you basically have to make sure that your no application has an access to the database okay so basically before before we take the offline backup we are going to stop the application uh, maybe in a smooth manner or by by force and then you take the database backup image to a disk or it can be a tape or a third party something like that okay so for an offline backup uh, the database will not be accessible so you need a downtime okay and the offline backup tends to be faster compared to the online backup okay i'll come to that later okay so um the main thing is your application won't be accessible at this point so, so bigger the database uh, the time duration of the backup will be more and your application cannot for a, cannot connect for a longer time right so you have to define your strategy backup strategy based depending on your all these uh, parameters okay so the downside of this is the database is not available uh, backup image is consistent so uh, we don't uh, need any kind of transaction log uh, later okay suppose you lost your or your transaction log is corrupt you can always recover your database just using your offline backup okay uh, the next one would, would be the online backup uh, if you see here the db2 backup database database name and we have uh, the keyword here online okay to the target location and in this i have given include logs as well okay so uh, remember one thing in uh, db2 uh, whenever we do an online backup we have to make sure that we have uh, logs uh, ready after the after the backup was taken suppose you have taken the backup on sunday and uh, sorry about that um, you need to make sure that all the logs are available from sunday to whatever point in time suppose it's today's wednesday or something like that then you need to make sure that after the backup whatever logs transaction logs were generated from the database should be available okay it is not possible to fully recover an online backup without the logs okay at bare minimal you should make sure that uh, as soon as the backup completes uh, one of the uh, logs will be archived to the uh, your 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 archive location so make sure that at bare minimum that a uh, log is available otherwise you will not be able to bring the database online in those cases uh, what happens is we have to contact the ibm support 
team and uh, they will make some changes to your control files and then bring the database online but it is not the correct way of doing it okay so whenever we take an online back online backup make sure you include the logs in the backup command okay so we can restore to this point in time if we don't give include logs you can have the backup um, but it won't be possible to restore the logs if these logs are corrupted or something like that okay so in db2 whenever we do online backup and we try to restore an online backup logs are mandatory okay the positive side of taking an online backup is database is always available okay backup image is consistent but with logs okay and um, the online backup tends to be slower compared to the offline backup because at the same time your server is busy and, and applications are accessing the database so online backup will be slower compared to the offline backup okay now uh, we ha also have something called incremental backup and delta backup okay uh, for db2 take uh, incremental backup or delta ba delta backup uh, if you remember the database configuration parameter there's a parameter called track mode okay so we need to make sure that we uh, we set the track mode to yes okay so that it can track the changes which is required to take incremental backup and delta backup so if you don't turn that parameter on and if you try to run the backup command with the incremental option it would say like your database is not configured for incremental backup <coughs> okay so uh, what is an incremental backup okay uh, now if you s uh, if you see here the incremental equal to all changes since the last full backup okay so the catch word here is the last full backup okay all the changes since the last full backup if you see here i took a full backup on sunday okay and till monday there were some changes made to the uh, database so some something here here and here okay so when you take that incremental backup all those changes will be stored in the image again on tuesday i'm going to take an incremental backup so whatever changes were done on monday and between monday and tuesday will be captured in the tuesday's image okay so basically what i mean to say here is whatever changes were done on the full backup after the full backup image it will be stored in the latest incremental backup okay so in case you need to uh, restore somewhere here till this point you just have to restore these two images the full backup and the saturday incremental image okay which so like a cumulative kind of uh, backup right so all the changes are there so like Tuesday contains the Monday's changes, Wednesday contains the Tuesday and Monday changes and in similar fashion Saturday contains all the changes which were done on Monday till Friday okay so the catch word is the from the la all the changes since the last full backup okay so that's called the incremental backup now uh, delta backup all changes since the last backup okay so on Sunday I took a full backup on Monday some changes were made so I took a backup delta backup so th all the changes which were captured on Monday will only be backed up here similarly uh, there were some changes made between Monday and Tuesday so only those changes will be captured on this delta backup similarly for other days okay so in case if you have to reach to somewhere in this point you have to reach to all these backup images okay in case it was incremental we just have to store saturday and the full backup right okay so that's the difference between the delta and the incremental backup incremental backup is from the last all the changes since the last full backup whereas the delta means only the changes since the last backup okay now uh, there is a um, the wrong uh, there's a wrong assumption of among that among the dbas most of the time like uh, if you go with incremental or delta backup it, uh, the backup will be faster compared to your full online or offline backup okay uh, it, it is totally not true okay it might the incremental data backup might consume more time 
because it has to track all the changes inside the database okay so the time wise incremental and delta backup might take same or more time compared to your online and full backup okay so the only advantage here is the size of the image will be smaller compared to your full backup okay so this is one of the interview question we generally ask like how uh, what is the difference between the incremental delta and uh, full backups okay and 99% of the time they say that uh, it will consume less time compared to the uh, full backup okay which is not true okay uh, now there are two kinds of recovery like <coughs> imagine your system was shut down not shut down properly okay for example you take your your own local system area and instead of like stopping the database properly and you just did a force restart of the system so in that case what happens okay that is one kind of recovery uh, other kind of recovery is when your disk has failed or you have some corruption in your uh, data files or log files or someone has uh, willingly deleted some of the log data files from your database or someone has dropped some tables okay so these are two a different kind of recoveries where your system was not shut down properly and in other case you have done, done something to your database okay so if you remember my uh, tutorial on the architecture of the database uh, i told right whenever a transaction try to insert update or delete uh, a database like some something in a database uh, first uh, it is written parallelly to both the buffer pool and the transaction log okay in the memory but it is written to the transaction log on the disk first and asynchronously to the data files okay it can be done on a later time now once uh, the data is written to the transaction log uh, a response will go back to the user saying your transaction was committed okay even though it is not written to the data uh, data file on the disk okay now imagine a scenario where you are doing a transaction and uh, uh, you did a transaction is it was returned to the transaction log and you got a response it was committed okay now the data it's still in the buffer pool and it has to be written to the uh, data file on the disk at the same time someone has like you know shut down the power of the system so what happens your transaction log is on the disk but your actual data is on the buffer pool so when you shut down the thing shut down the server all your data in the uh, buffer pool which is nothing but your ram will disappear right but that data is still available on your transaction log on the disk so when you bring up the system and you bring up the database database will initially go for a crash recovery okay so it will see which which of the transaction which were committed or rolled back but were never returned to the disk on the data file okay it will replay all those logs and it will make those changes to the database data files and then only your database will come online okay so that's called the crash recovery where your database will read through the logs automatically you don't have to do anything okay uh, it will whatever the committed trans transaction it will make sure it is written to the disk and whatever was rolled back it will just roll back and you will bring your database online okay so this is an automated recovery which is a crash recovery okay so that's what you are talking in this uh, recovery technique the crash recovery the next thing was you made some error in the database and how do you recover it right we know how to back up the database now. so how do we restore the database okay in db2 we have um, two important commands one is the restore command and another one is the roll forward command okay now what does restore do? restore basically just restores your backup image okay you took a backup of the database you will use the restore command to restore this image on your server okay 
second roll forward what does roll forward do? roll forward is basically a command to replay through all your logs which were created after the backup was done okay now imagine um, this is a database and you took this database backup image on sunday okay and all this thing all these logs were created on monday tuesday and wednesday okay so the restore command what it will do is it will restore this image from the tape okay and the roll forward will command will apply the logs which were created on monday tuesday wednesday so basically roll forward is for lo transaction logs and restore is for your backup image okay so so this has to be done manual by the admin okay he has to give the commands to do that whereas in case of crash recovery it's automated okay so i spoke about the role for recovery right where you go and replay your transaction logs okay so let us see the sequence how it uh, works now first thing will be to restore the database using the restore command okay you will use the restore command here to restore your database now when you give the roll forward command okay now what happens is um, db2 will try to find which transaction logs it needs from the tsm or from the archive log destination okay now how it does it uh, db2 will have a history file okay so the roll forward utility will read the history file and it will get the exact name of the log file which need to be restored okay so it will be automatically taken care by the roll forward like from which file it should start the roll forward okay i'm just talking about start of the uh, log file okay and then then it will read all the log files which are required and it will bring up the database online okay so restore roll forward in the roll forward it will read the history file it will apply the log files and it will bring the database online okay now on a daily basis you might be taking so many you might be having so many servers and you might be taking a lot many backups right so and and a customer ask coming and asking you i want you to restore this uh, database and uh, to this point okay so at, at that point you have to find um, the timestamp of the image when it was taken in what kind of a backup image it is right so how do we uh, find which backup image i can use so there is a uh, command called db2 list history backup okay for the database using this you can find all the information about the database backup whether it's online whether it's offline whether it's incremental or a delta backup timestamp which log is required after the backup image is stored so all this information can be found using the db2 list history command now uh, there might be a scenario that you might have a corrupted history file or you might have lost history file okay so it is always possible to restore the history file using the db2 restore command okay just restoring the history file okay now in case um, you have your disk your your image on the disk okay you can always use this command db2 ckbkp h and the image name and you will get all the information about the backup image for example you have a file on your disk you, it is not possible to just say like it is an online or it's an offline backup image or say incremental or delta backup image right so you you can use this command db2 check backup uh, it's called check backup so you can just use this command with this header and the image file name it will give all information about that backup image okay and in case you you are taking your backup to a tsm server okay you can use the db2 edit ul query command to query the image on the tsm server and get information about the backup image okay so ckbkb on the disk this is for your tsm servers okay so, and you might have some other vendors as well right so depending on your vendors you might have different commands which you can execute to get the information about the backup image um in this um slide i'm going to talk about how 
we can identify which images we need to restore when we have a combination of full incremental and delta backups being taken on a database okay so in this scenario as you can see uh, we have a full backup on sunday then we have a delta backup on monday tuesday wednesday and then we have an incremental backup on thursday then again we have a ba backup on delta backup on friday okay and you just uh, lost your database somewhere at this point okay now in general uh, we need to restore the full backup first then we don't need all this delta backup because we already have all the changes in the incremental backup okay then we will restore this delta backup and we'll roll forward to these logs whatever logs from this point to this point okay so restore of this incremental delta and the full backup will be done by the restore command right and replaying of the logs will be done by the roll forward command okay now sometimes uh, you want to know the sequence at which the restore should be done okay so there is a command called db to check rst hyphen d your database name hyphen timestamp and you give the latest backup image timestamp so in this case it is the friday delta backup image right so it will automatically generate a set of sequels okay you just need to go and execute those commands okay manually so this command will generate the list of sql it will not execute the sqls you have to manually go and execute the sqls okay so that sql will basically uh, contain the restore command like uh, it will have the three in, uh, three restore commands first restore full incremental delta and like that suppose you don't want to do that you just want to restore automatically right you can use this command db to restore database prd incremental backup this is the keyword here from whatever location and give the latest friday timestamp so within a single command all this backups images will be stored whatever is required full incremental delta okay you don't have to worry about anything you just give this uh, timestamp and it works for you okay uh, one thing uh, which is missing in the slide is um, I said right. Uh, suppose you want to restore this to this point in time, we have to first restore full to the incremental and delta. Okay. Theoretically, that is correct. But when you are executing the command on your database server, first this image will be stored, re restored, then your full image, then the incremental image, and then this delta which delta image again. So your delta image will be restored two times and i will tell you the reason why it is done okay when you do the first restore of this delta image the history file and the database structure is only restored no actual data will be restored okay the logic behind is that latest history file will have information about all this images like the, this image and this image right because it has the latest history file now imagine if you restore this history this this image now this image will have a history file which will not have any information about the backups which happened after the after this full backup image right okay so that's why we need to restore this image first then this image this, then incremental then delta in the first restore only history file and the database structure is restored and during the full restore all the data again will be restored okay so delta full incremental delta okay so uh, similarly when you execute this command you will see four restore commands not three restore commands okay so logically data will be restored first from here but when you execute the command uh, on your server you have to make sure that you restore first this 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 and this okay. So if you run this command, you'll see four restore uh, statement here also. When you execute the command, automatically behind the screen four restore commands will be executed. Okay. And uh, this is the command to restore, and uh, you can use this db to list utility show detail to see the progress of your uh, database image, like how how much work has completed, so those kind of things. Okay. This is the command to uh, restore and this is the command to monitor your uh, restore command. Okay. 
and you can always use your uh, db to diag log to see the completion of uh, restore command or you can check the prompt as well okay um Now uh, this is the roll forward command uh, where I have taken uh, I have taken a backup of the image here and after that there were so many transaction logs being generated. Okay. Now what happens um, when you have a crash somewhere here? Okay. You just imagine you had a crash somewhere here. Okay. And uh, your system is running on a time zone of maybe Indian standard time or something like that okay now when you give the suppose I said this is a 9 o'clock just when this is 9 a.m. IST okay now when we give the command suppose I want to restore till this point I give the command roll forward database uh, this database name to a particular time instant like suppose 9 a.m. and I don't give this using local time okay then the time zone which database will roll, roll for will be in UTC and not in your local time okay so even though you want the database to be restored till 9 am IST because you didn't give a using local time the time zone will be calculated as 9 am UTC okay and which is not the required objective of your roll forward right so make sure whenever you give a point in time recovery always use a using local time keyword okay otherwise your database will be restored to your time in UTC not in your local time zone okay now uh, we also have a keyword called to end of logs in the roll forward database command so what does end of log does okay now exam I told you here if the time was 9 am when you give to 9 am the roll forward command will only read the logs till this time zone till this time limit okay now if you give end of logs it will read all the logs till the end and it will do all the transaction you have done to your database let me give an example okay now in this log maybe this was nine o'clock this is ten o'clock <coughs> at 10 o'clock what happened was you accidentally dropped the database now you want to recover the database now right so what you will do is you will give roll for database to till 9 am so that it does not read this log and you don't want to read this log because it is it has dropped the table right so you give 9, 9 am using local time the database will be back to action your did your table will not be dropped and you you can have the complete access to the table now instead of giving the time you gave end of logs what will happen the database will roll forward to all the logs and it will stop here and it will bring the database online so what happens is here is the table was dropped in this log right again it will be dropped because it is just redoing the transaction again and so basically uh, whatever the purpose of the roll forward is not achieved because you have read you have read the all the logs right so you, you basically have to redo it again with a point in time so be careful when you use end of log because it is going to read all the logs which are available for the database okay it might be from the tsm or it might be from the disk similarly uh, once you have uh, once like before you're starting the roll forward or you want to check the roll forward status later you can always use this uh, command roll forward database production uh, prd database name and query status okay now when the status says db pending or db working it means that uh, you can run the roll forward command and you can give more logs to it okay for example um, first you replace 100 logs then you want to give more 100 logs to the roll forward command you can always go ahead and give it okay but when it says no, not pending, it means your database is accessible. Okay, so DB pending and DB working, you can still apply logs. 
but whereas when it says not pending your database is accessible on okay similarly if you see here um, it says non no pe not pending right so we don't have to do anything the database is online now okay uh, but here if you see uh, it says the recover database is not the roll forward command right now recover database command uh, what it does is it basically restores roll forward and it will activate the database it will do three things within a single command okay you don't have to restore the database separately or you don't, don't have to roll forward database separately you don't have to activate the database okay it will do all these three things for you but the limitation here is you need to have the latest history file if you don't have the latest history file you cannot use this command to recover your database okay second thing is it will not work with the incremental and delta backup pages okay so there are certain limitations i have hardly used this on my production environment okay i usually go with restore and roll forward because it gives you more much more control and uh, much more like you can use the incremental data backups right and you also don't need the history file for this for doing a normal uh, roll forward and restore okay so if you are going going to go ahead with the recover database uh, command basically make sure you have a latest history file and you don't have any incremental or delta backup images on your server okay uh, so this is a scenario where uh, i took a backup full backup somewhere on monday and i did some transaction and uh, at this point i dropped a table called mara right so it was the logical failure happened around uh, on 26th of march around 1348 okay that was the local time okay now I, when i roll forward i may need to make sure that i give you know any time before that right i don't want to give 49 because if i give 49 again it will read through the transaction log and it will drop the table again okay so i just made sure that i gave some time before it like 1346 and this is the keyword here like the using local time okay make sure you're giving the local time zone here otherwise it will be in utc and you might get some other errors okay so this is uh, one example of doing a roll forward recovery in point in time okay so with that i'm going to cover the backup and uh, restore for db database and uh, in the next class i'll be going through some practical scenarios of backup and restore and i'll try to do a um, demo of, of backup and restore okay thanks for watching